Hey everyone, this is Johan and welcome. Today's episode is a quilting episode where I share with you my quilting adventure. And this time I would love to share this really fun quilt behind me. This is sort of um, the square in the square quilt. So the finished measurement of this quilt is about 51 and a half inch wide and 60 inches long. So it's a great throw size quilt. For this quilt, you will need the whole pack of layer cake or the 10 inch squares. They usually comes 42 pieces in one package. This is a relatively simple quilt to make. I reckon this quilt also as beginner friendly so if you already knew the basic of quilting, I believe you can make this quilt. So I hope you enjoyed this quilt along video and without further ado, let's get started. Prepare a full package of layer cake or the 10 inch squares. The one that I have here is from the French General by Moda Fabrics and this line is called Fleur de Noël. Now take two contrasting layer cakes. So I've got here one darker color and another one lighter color. Lay the layer cake straight on the cutting mat, aligning all the edges. And then you want to stack the other one right on top of it, making sure all the edges are aligned. Now take your ruler and measure three and a half inch and then cut. Now from the cutting line, you want to measure one and a half inch and then cut. So now we've got three and a half inch strips and one and a half inch strips. So I'm going to move these guys out of the way for now. Now I'm going to take these strips that should be measuring five inch wide. Now I'm going to lay them with wise just like that. Then I'm going to take my ruler and do pretty much the same as before. So I'm going to measure three and a half inch first and then cut. Then I'm going to measure one and a half inch from the first cutting line and then cut. So you will end up with five pieces of fabric from each layer cake. Now if you want the written cutting instruction and uh, layout pictures, you may hop over to my website. I will have the link in the description box down below. Now we're going to separate fabric A from fabric B. We're going to start from the number one, which is the five inch squares. These are going to be the inner squares. Now we're going to take the rest of the panels and put them all back together. However, you want to swap them. So you want to put the panels from fabric B to frame the square of fabric A and vice versa. So you're going to end up with something like this. Now go ahead and sew your block starting from the panel number two and three or the shorter panels. And of course, we're going to use the quarter inch of seam allowance throughout the piecing. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and sew this panel. Now go ahead and press the seams. It doesn't really matter to which direction. Ideally, you want to press it towards the darker color. All right, now we're going to sew the fourth and fifth panels or the longer panels. So I'm going to start with this panel here. And obviously this panel is longer now in measurements. I don't like to start from the edge, so I kind of center the position a little bit. That's just a personal preference. We're going to square up the block later anyway and trim off whatever excess. Now we're going to sew the last panel. Next, we're going to trim off the excess fabric and then square up the block to measure nine inch square. You can use square ruler like I do here. So simply find that nine inch point and then trim off whatever excess. You can also use regular ruler if you don't have um, this kind of um, square ruler. Just make sure that your block will turn out to be exactly nine inch by nine inch. Now I'm going to do the same with the other set. So you want to do the same for the rest of your layer cake pieces. Now there is one more point that I want to emphasize here. When you arrange the block, it doesn't really matter the position of the panel. So you can swap the position just like what I'm doing here as long as they will match. And of course you have to make sure that the inner square is kept inside. You can do batching if you want to make it a lot faster. Like right here, I've got four sets ready to be sewn. They're all already in order. So I'm going to go ahead and sew them all at the same time with chain piecing method. Now, if you're afraid that you're going to get confused or you get so much distraction, you can simply do two at a time. Or you can also do more, maybe do six or eight at a time. 
whatever makes sense for you. When laying out the quilt blocks, arrange them in a regular manner. What I mean by that is you want to make sure that each block doesn't sit in the exact same position. So make it real random. Perhaps you want to alternate the darker color from the lighter color. Make them look more interesting. So this is how my layout turned out to be. So you'll end up with 7 rows and each row will have six blocks so here i've got all of my quilt blocks already systematically grouped according to each row from the first row up to the seventh row and i label each row with my sticky note and simply keep them together with my fabric clips all right now i'm ready to sew them together now you can sew one row at a time or you can do like me and sew two rows simultaneously sort of doing chain piecing so i keep the labels intact on the first block just to make sure i won't get lost what i'm gonna do i'm gonna start from my first row so i'm going to take the first and the second blocks sew them together and just like doing chain piecing i'm not gonna cut the thread and i'm gonna go ahead and grab my second row so the first and the second block of the second rows and i'm gonna go ahead and sew them together Alright, now I'm gonna go ahead and cut the thread of my first row, then take the third block of the first row, and then sew. So I'm gonna keep doing the same sequence until I get to the last block. Press the seams of each row towards opposite directions. For example, if you press the seams of the first row towards the left square, then you wanna press the seams of the second row towards the right square and vice versa all right so here i've got each of the row already sewn now it's time to sew all of these rows together so i like to sew the first and the second row first and then the third and the fourth row and then the fifth and the sixth row and then i join them all together so let's start from the first and the second row so i'm going to sew of course with quarter inch of seam allowance and I simply match the seams as I go. If you are a pinner, you can pin them first matching the seams. So use whichever way is more comfortable for you. And then go ahead and press the seams. It doesn't really matter to which direction you want to press at this point. Now I'm going to go ahead and sew the third and the fourth row. Alright, so here I've got my quilt top already layered with the quilt batting and the quilt backing. Now it's time to baste them. I like using basting spray, but you can use pins or combine basting spray with pins or use fusible batting, whatever it is that you prefer. So I have free motion quilt this with simple look to the look design and i also added a little bit of snowflakes design um, where it's uh, visible like here and i also did a little bit of scribbling with cursive writing uh, i wrote sim some simple words like hope or joy peace since i actually made this for christmas obviously you can quilt this in whatever quilting method that you like like you can do walking foot quilting or hand quilting or long arm quilt. Once you've done quilting, go ahead and bind your quilt in any method that you like. So I use this pre-made quilt binding from Wrights. I happen to have this in my stash and I thought this is gonna go very well with the whole quilt. This binding is quite chunky though, so the width is about 7 8 of an inch, but I kind of like it. It sort of really framed the whole quilt since I didn't add any border to this quilt. And I apply this binding exactly the same way as I would apply a bias binding. And I finish it with hand stitching. If you make your own binding strips, you're gonna need about seven strips for this project. And that's about it guys. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video serve you well. And I shall see you next time with another fun sewing and quilting project. Goodbye.